When quoting scripture in this video, we are using the easy to read version of the Bible from the free downloadable software program eSword. Okay, let's begin. Israel was God's chosen people. God had made a covenant, an agreement, or a contract with them. And as with all agreements, there are two sides. As you can see in Exodus, it says, So now I tell you to obey my commands and keep my agreement. So if you do this, you will be my own special people. The whole world belongs to me, but I am choosing you to be my own special people. If, if, if. But the Israelites didn't keep their side of the agreement. God kept warning them by sending prophet after prophet, telling them to turn from their wicked ways and come back to God, and sometimes they would repent and change their ways. But the Israelites would go back to their evil ways again and again, generation after generation, even long after Moses. So in Ezekiel, it talks about those generations. It says, I spoke to their children and told them, don't be like your parents. Don't make yourself filthy with their filthy idols. Don't follow their laws or obey their commands. I am the Lord. I am your God. Obey my laws and keep my commands. Do the things I tell you. Show that my days of rest are important to you. Remember, they are a special sign between us. I am the Lord, and these days show you that I am your God. Days of rest are also known as Sabbaths. In Ezekiel, it talks about the children again. But the children turned against me and did not obey my laws. They did not keep my commands. Even though people who obey my laws live because of them, they treated my special days of rest as though they were not important. So I decided to destroy them. They com completely in the desert to let them feel the full force of my anger. But I stopped myself. The other nations saw me bring Israel out of Egypt. I did not want to ruin my good name. So I did not destroy Israel in front of those other people. So I made another promise to those people in the desert. I promised to scatter them among the nations to send them to many different countries. The people of Israel did not obey my commands. They refused to obey my laws. They treated my special days of rest as though they were not important. And they worshipped the filthy idols of their fathers. So I gave them laws that were not good. I gave them commands that would not bring life. In other words, since they refused to follow God's leading, God let them rule themselves. And it shows in Ezekiel. I let them make themselves filthy with their gifts. They even began to sacrifice their own firstborn children. In this way, I would destroy them. Then they would know that I am the Lord. And they continued this right up to when Jesus came to collect the lost people of Israel. Like when Jesus came, it talks about in Matthew. He had said, Jesus answered, God sent me only to the lost people of Israel. They were the first ones that he came for. When Jesus comes, he sees the Israelites are quite lost, and he's very disappointed. He knew that they would have been the chosen people if they had obeyed God. But the religious leaders had actually led the Israelites astray, and he lets those leaders really have it which we will cover in part two. Like we covered in part one, the Israelites refused to obey God, so God decided to let them rule themselves and scattered them among the nations of the world. In uh, Matthew, it 
shows 33 verses that uh, Jesus is talking to the heads of Israel at the time, and he's not very happy, and we're going to go over all of them. Then Jesus spoke to the people and to his followers. He said, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees have the authority to tell you what the law of Moses says, so you should obey them. Do everything they tell you to do. But their lives are not good examples for you to follow. They tell you to do things, but they don't do those things themselves. They make strict rules that are hard for people to obey. They try to force others to obey all their rules, but they themselves will not try to follow any of those rules. The only reason that they do what they do is for other people to see them. They make the little scripture boxes. They wear bigger and bigger and they make the tassels on their prayer clothes long enough for people to notice them. Better pause here to explain. In Exodus 13.9 this festival will help you remember. It will be like a string tied on your hand. It will be like a sign before your eyes. This festival will help you remember the Lord's teaching. It will help you remember the Lord used His great power to take you out of Egypt. Be before your eyes uh, would be your forehead. And what's behind your forehead? Your mind, your brain, your memory. So God meant that he wanted them to know in their minds his word, but instead they had God's word written out and then placed it in boxes, which they strapped to their heads. The Pharisees took this literally, as you can see from the picture, and that's what's being referred to in Matthew 23, 5. Okay, continuing on. The leaders of Israel liked the praise and attention that they got from people more so they were more concerned with what people thought of them than what God thinks of them. So it shows that in the next verses of Matthew, these men loved to have the places of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogue. They loved for people to show respect to them in the marketplaces and to call them teacher. But you must not call must not be called teacher. You are all equal as brothers and sisters. You have only one teacher. And don't, don't call anyone on earth father. You have one father. He is in heaven. And you should not be called master. You have only one master, the Messiah. Whoever serves you like a servant is the greatest among you. People who think they are better than others will be made humble. But people who humble themselves will be made great. They taught ways of getting approval from man and not ways of getting God's approval. Matthew 23, it will be, a bad, it will be bad for you teachers of the law and you Pharisees. You are hypocrites. You close the way for people to enter God's kingdom. You yourselves don't enter. And you stop those who are trying to enter. It will be bad for you teachers of the law and you Pharisees. You are hypocrites. You cheat widows and take their homes. Then you make long prayers so that people can see you. So you will have a worse punishment. It will be bad for you, teachers of the law and you Pharisees. You are hypocrites. You travel across the sea and across different countries to find one person who will follow your ways. When you find that person, you make him worse than you are. And you are so bad that you belong in hell. The leaders are more concerned about money than spirituality. It will be bad for you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. You guide the people, but you are blind. You say if anyone uses the name of the temple to make a promise, that means nothing. But anyone who uses the gold that is in the temple to make a promise must keep that promise. You're blind fools. Can't you see that the 
temple is greater than the gold on it? It's the temple that makes the gold holy. And you say, if anyone uses the altar to make a promise, that means nothing. But anyone who uses the gift on the altar to make a promise must keep the promise. You are blind. Can't you see the altar is greater than any gift on it? It's the altar that makes the gift holy. Whoever uses the altar to make a promise is really using the altar and everything on the altar. And anyone who uses the temple to make a promise is really using the temple and God who lives in it. Whoever uses heaven to make a promise is using God's throne and the one who is seated on it. When we continue in part three, the focus will be on their hypocr hypocrisy. In part one, we covered God's disappointment with Israel. And in part two, we covered how Jesus was disappointed with the leaders of Israel. Here in part three, we will be focusing on their hypocrisy. In Matthew 23, again, it will be bad for you teachers of the law and you Pharisees. You are hypocrites. You give God a tenth of the food you get, even your mint, dill, and common. But you don't obey the really important teachings of the law, being fair, showing mercy, and being faithful. These are the things you should do. And you should also continue to do those other things. You guide the people, but you are blind. Think about a man picking a little fly out of his drink and then swallowing a camel. You are like that. It will be bad for you teachers of the law, you Pharisees. You are hypocrites. You wash. Clean the outside of your cups and dishes, but inside they are full of what you got by cheating others and pleasing yourself. Cleaning the cup, he's referring to cleaning their spirit, what's in their heart and their mind. Yeah, further in Matthew 23, Pharisees, you are blind. First make the inside of the cup clean and good. Then the outside of the cup will also be clean. It will be bad for you teachers of the law and you Pharisees. You are hypocrites. You are like tombs that are painted white. Outside they look fine, but inside they are full of dead people's bones and all kinds of filth. It is the same with you. People look at you and think you are godly, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and evil. It will be bad for you teachers that are lied, you Pharisees. You are hypocrites. You build tombs for the prophets, and you show honor to the graves of the godly people who were killed. And you say, if we had lived during the time of our ancestors, we would not have helped them kill them, these prophets. So you give proof that you are the descendant of those who killed the prophets. And you will finish the sin that your ancestors started. You are snakes. You are from a family of poisonous snakes. You will not escape God. You will all be judged guilty and go to hell. So I tell you this, I send you, I send to you prophets and teachers who are wise and know the scriptures. You will kill some of them. You will hang some of them on crosses. You will beat some of them in your synagogues. You will chase from them the town to town. So you will be guilty for the death of all the good people who have been killed on earth. You will be guilty for the killing of that godly man Abel. 
and you will be guilty for the killing of Zachariah's son of Zechariah. He will he was killed between the temple and the altar. You will be killed for the killing of all the good people who have lived between the time of Abel and the time of Zechariah. In the next uh, portion, the temple or house of God um, is referred to, and it's empty because God's spirit is not there. Moving on in Matthew 23, believe me when I say to you, say that all these things will happen to you people who are living now. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you kill the prophets, you stone to death those that God has sent to you. Many, many times I wanted to help you people. I wanted to gather you together as hens, gather their chicks under her wings, but you did not let me. Now your house will be left completely empty. I tell you, you will not see me again until that time when you will say, Welcome, God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. As you can see, Jerusalem, or the chicks, which refers to the Israelites, didn't want to gather into the body of the believers in Jesus. So the covenant or contract they had with God as being the chosen was broken by the Israelites themselves by not only refusing Jesus, but killing him, and then saying that Caesar was their only king. In John 19.15, they shouted, Take him away! Take him away! Kill him on the cross! Pilate asked them, Do you want me to kill your king on the cross? The, leader, the leading priests answered, the only king we have is Caesar. So, in conclusion, don't focus on or follow Israel. They've gone the wrong way. Follow Jesus. He knows the way. He came from heaven to earth and is in heaven now and will be coming back to earth as the great shepherd to gather his sheep. Are you one of his sheep? 